This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Unless indicated, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. For dispatchers in emergency centers across the country, each call brings the voice of a person in trouble, and each response may save a life. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of miraculous recoveries and tragic loss on Rescue 911. We begin on a dairy farm in western Pennsylvania, where Pat Strausser and her family have lived for the past two years. Around 4.30 p.m., Pat had gone down to the barn to feed the cows before milking them. While she worked, her three children played on the level above, including her two-year-old son, Danny. An actor portrays Danny, but the rest of the people involved have returned to help us tell his story. The cart that we put the grain into was getting empty, so I pushed it under what we call the feed hole to let the feed drop down into it. Danny came over to what we call the hay hole, and he told me he couldn't get his shoe on. Christy, can you help him get his shoe back on? He saw me using a stick to poke the feed to get it to come down the hole because it was clogged. And I think he thought, well, now's my big chance to help Mommy. Whenever I got to the feed bin, all I saw was feed. It was just total panic. The more I dug, the more feed kept falling on top of him. I couldn't find him. I heard the kids, and I could just see the girls there yelling and screaming. And I just took off running. I finally found Danny's hand, and I jerked him out. And I held him up and looked at him. And I just felt that he was already dead. Pat's boyfriend, Rob Holmes, and the farm's owner, Don Gans, came running to help. When I got there, Danny was stiff, and he wasn't moving. His eyes were rolled back in the top of his head. I was just terrified that we had already lost him. I had checked really quick for the pulse of his heart. It was still beating. His mouth was totally clogged and full of feet. It was just packed, and I cleaned, cleaned all that out with my hands and then tried to push air into his lungs. Pat ran to the house to call for an ambulance. Neither one of us knew how to do it for sure, but uh, you know, we, knew, we knew we had to do something, and he was near dead and he was alive. Hold on, I need some more air. Emergency dispatch, I'm help you. The call for help came into the IGCO dispatch center at 5.06 p.m. The local volunteer fire department was immediately alerted. Control to station 32, all fire and port to the fire hall. We have a medical emergency, 1805 Park Avenue, medical emergency. Station 32 is in service control. I had a rough time to get in the air to go down. I was afraid of hurting him by trying to force it too hard. Paramedics were also called in from the nearest township. 74, go ahead, control. Got a little boy injured in a grain elevator accident. Town 4, unit 74 will be responding.
When the first emergency workers arrived on the scene, Rob and Don were still trying to revive the boy. Assistant Fire Chief Bruce Gray took over the resuscitation efforts. We were very concerned when we first got there because the boy didn't appear to be breathing. Uh, we could not distinguish any breath of it on his own, so we proceeded to go ahead and put the mask on him and give him air, but he couldn't take a very deep breath because he was so full of grain. His lungs were packed. The amount of grain that he had ingested uh, was having an effect on him because it was swelling up inside of him. After grain hits the water and the moisture in the body, it tends to uh, swell up. And at that time, we were unsure whether we were going to be able to bring him around and, and get him to breathe on his own because he was so full of grain. I don't think I can really even describe how I felt at that point, knowing that I might lose my baby. It just seemed impossible that it was him lying there, you know, motionless. And I just felt so helpless seeing him that way. Ten minutes later, the ambulance arrived with paramedic Brad Malone and his partner. His color was bad, so we knew we only had some short amount of time to work with since he wasn't moving enough oxygen to live on. They had to suction the feet out of his airways or he would suffocate. When it's a little two-year-old who hasn't had much time to live and to have to come across something like this makes you go that extra mile to do what you can to save him. The boy was semi-conscious and breathing shallowly. They could do nothing more for him in the field, but continue to try to force air into his body. The decision was made to transport him to the hospital. I felt it was my fault. I blamed myself. That's it. Come on, Danny. Open your eyes. I just felt defenseless. I could not do anything to help him, it was out of my hands. I think it's the worst feeling any parent could ever feel. I put my trust in God, and that was it. It was a total roller coaster ride up and down every couple hours because we'd get good news, and then the next time somebody talked to us, it was a setback. Something was going wrong. Danny needed to have the green removed from his body immediately. He was transported by helicopter to the Children's Wing of Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh, where Dr. Anthony Ulysio took charge. The child uh, had aspirated uh, massive amounts of grain particles. It appeared that it would be just a matter of time where his body would collapse, and uh, uh, death was a very uh, real possibility. One of the doctors that was going to do the surgery said that Daniel wouldn't make it without the surgery. And then he says, and then he might not make it with the surgery. And that was, you know, kind of hard to take. They began working on the boy by 10 p.m. The dry feed was swelling inside his body. They had to remove it grain by grain before it completely blocked the airways of his lungs. The procedure involved uh, passing the telescope uh, into the child's uh, windpipe. We worked through the inside of the telescope with very small equipment, forceps, which were uh, used to grasp the multiple particles we encountered and remove them. The particles uh, had migrated into the smallest openings of the lungs that we could possibly see with the limits of our equipment. After two hours, the procedure was completed successfully. When I knew he was going to make it, it was like he was being born again, you know, having your first baby or something. That's what I felt like. I was just so happy. Danny is three years old now. He was released from the hospital after nine days and has suffered no ill effects. It was just lucky that Danny's foot came down through that hole. It could have gotten stuck, and I'd never even known he was in there. I'm very, very, very happy that he came back home, and that because we missed him, and because he always plays with us, too. When he first came home, he said, I love you. I feel very lucky 
that my son is still here. I'm not his natural father, but for some reason, to him I am his dad. I did what any dad would have done if that was their son laying there. I mean, there's quite a few people dying for his life, and there's quite a few heroes out there. Thank you.